Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today for the season premiere of Summer House Season 8, Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, how are you? I'm feeling great. Feeling great. Uh, a lot of things to be grateful for. One is that we have some shows coming up. We've got shows in London and Birmingham and Dublin. That Dublin was just announced uh, earlier this week. So uh, be sure to that they actually just went on sale. The public on sale just happened. So uh, go get your tickets. Watchcrappers.com. Come join us in Europe. We're so excited for that. But also Netflix is a joke. Big comedy festival here in Los Angeles. And we are very grateful that we are part of it. Uh, we're going to be at our friend Katie Cazorla's lounge, the Kookaburra Lounge. So be sure to buy tickets for that too. All the tickets, just go to our link tree and things like that. Uh, can't wait to see you all there. But anyway, also Patreon, patreon.com slash watch what crappens. You can watch us, not just listen. With crappens on demand. And our bonus this week was the Southern Hospitality season finale. Had a lot of fun with that. So if you're wondering where those recaps are, check out our bonus episode. But um, Summer House, big Summer House premiere. Ronnie, thoughts, feelings, emotions? Summer housing is back in the housing. Um, I think I did myself a disservice watching Winter House because I'm like, how much can how much of this can I take? <laughs> Which I know it's yes. not the same thing, but it is a lot of people lying around not doing much. Now that said, I always love Summer House. I think they did a great job with bringing some fresh blood in, and they actually seem to be people with a pulse, which is new for this yes. show i mean bringing on two new men with a pulse is huge that's huge news yeah. in the summer house world yeah i actually agree i felt like this was a super strong premiere i felt like there was a really good house chemistry going on i mean we've had to suffer through some real duds recently we had chris we had alex i know people people sort of have a place in their heart for alex but let's be honest alex is a little meh i mean what's his face uh was 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 good our uh you know ah lexi you know he was he was good but yes the point is this i thought i thought there was a really good vibe i felt like the i felt like this was a really good premiere and i agree with you about winter house because i famously kind of trailed off of winter house and i think that winter house has actually affected the summer house brand because winter house is so bad you know but summer house is significantly better than winter house and i was reminded about that today watching this premiere. Well, they're also bringing Summer House Martha's Vineyard back in a couple of weeks or in a month, I guess, uh, which is, I don't need to, so you guys can't do this to us, okay? You yeah. can't make it like below deck five nights a week. Then you're, okay, now it's just gonna be Summer House. We're gonna go straight from Winter House into summer, two Summer Houses. It's not smart to do that. Spread it out, guys. We don't need I agree. 90 fucking thousand people sitting around in a house. Okay. Especially Although because Summer House Martha's Vineyard, I think, is the superior show. So yeah. I'm actually more excited for that one to come back. I think Summer House Martha's Vineyard is actually a great show. But maybe their thinking is that this Summer House season is going to be a really strong one, which maybe might help other Summer House. I don't know. But uh, I agree. One Summer House at a time. Okay, but yeah, I like it. It's not. It's no shade to the other one because the other one was really excellent. But so um, we have um, yeah. the Scandaval ripoff, which is how we begin all shows on Bravo now, where we try to make them like Scandaval, <clears throat> where there is a huge drama that they open the season with this huge drama, and then we rewind and have to watch the whole season leading up to this drama. Very Sunset Boulevard, like opening with the guy dead in the pool, and then you have to mm -hmm. see why is he dead? Who is he? Why is he in a pool? Mm. <laughs> yes um except in this case the dead body is this relationship and the pool is just like um a whole bunch of stuff ordered lover boy zazzle <laughs> yeah. lover boy and zazzle uh bridegroom tchotchkes for their so we did an hour-long recap of this segment of the show on our below deck preview which you can watch on our patreon but basically, this is like um, Carl and Lindsay's couple talk. 
And she's saying, um, what do you want from me? And he's saying, I just, uh, I want you to trust me. I want you to be happy. And you need to have power over the other person, Lindsay. That's the problem with you. It's like, I do not need power. Sit down. Stand up. Sit down. Stand up. Turn on the TV. Turn off the TV. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. <laughs> I love Carl coming to this realization about Lindsay when we've all known this about her for the past several years, like eight seasons on the show, and he's only figuring it out now. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I can feel bad for Carl on this one. Oh, yeah. Lindsay's controlling. I'm shocked. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Lindsay needs to have power, but you need someone really strong and domineering so that you can blame them for all your faults later. Exactly. Carl. Okay. Exactly. Carl, Carl, Carl. Carl so Carl, we Carl, see a little Carl. glimpse of where this shit show is going to be heading. And then now, and now two months earlier, we're in New York. Trixie Mattel, I'm not Trixie Mattel, although that would be funny if it was Trixie Mattel. Trixie Monocle is like, show me how you're doing. Show me, show me how you're doing. And we just see Sierra and Paige on a sidewalk. I'm like, well, that's how they're doing. Walk they on. are standing on, on the curb. Sidewalk. So that's, <laughs> there's the answer to your question. Did you get to the Carl and Lindsay broke up part? Did you say that? Um, I, well, I said we were going two months earlier from when they, I mean, I was like, I thought that's what we were talking about. Was they the broke breakup. off the wedding. Yes. Yeah. They yes. broke it off. And she's like, Dad, he told me he wants to break off the wedding. Well, she's going to tell everyone she's blindsided. Dad, I was blindsided. <laughs> that cracked me up. <laughs> can't say he didn't know her. So, yeah. yeah. So now we're going to find out how this all went down. Well, I can tell you without even seeing how it all went down. Lindsay is Lindsay and Carl is Carl. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what happened. And and their relationship was just some sort of like aspirational hope that if they bring their damage together that somehow it will magically negate each other and life will be happily ever after like that this relationship is going to solve everything and it solved nothing right two broken dishes don't make a china set okay just That's makes right a lot of broken pieces <laughs> more pieces <laughs> to cut you okay it's just more blood in the end it's not if listen those two plates are not gonna score a big sum on antique road show okay they're gonna see the glue that's going to be shabby. So the girls are waiting for a ride, and it's their ride in their gigantic SUV for the year. It's Danielle. And they're like, oh, my God, Danielle, it's a one-way. It's like, one no shit, I'm Danielle. I don't give a fuck, guys. This is the new Danielle season. This time, I'm not needy, desperate Danielle. I'm needy, Dan desperate Danielle in an SUV. And I don't give a fuck about one-ways. Classic Danielle thinking that she can forge ahead in a one-way relationship. So um, so she picks them up, and they get in, and Sierra's like, yeah, now we're cooking with, is it grease or is it oil? And Paige is like, um, it's cooking, cooking with gas. So stupid. What a, bad, what a bad way to start off the season. <laughs> Sierra's like, I've never driven to the Hamptons with you, Danielle. And she's like, yeah, well, I was in Montauk for the weekend last, year, last week. Which, you know she's been in the Hamptons because she's saying weekend. And Paige yeah. is like, how was it? And she goes, wild. It was like hookup central guys. Totally, believe me. Made out with like five guys. Probably banged like six guys. <laughs> guys, it's the new Danielle. I'm like, totally having fun. Right, guys? <laughs> right? <laughs> Weren't we partying? Guys, are we partying? Are we partying, guys? <laughs> Cut to Danielle chasing every waiter in a restaurant. Why won't you hook up with me? Hook up with me. Poor like, sad talk desperate anymore. Danielle. I was hoping Danielle might take a minute uh, and just come back to this show refreshed. Nope. Danielle's still terrifying me. Okay. I'm like the opposite of Sierra. The world is my oyster now. Everyone's going to hook up with me. Yeah. Okay. Now, did when I say I hooked up last weekend, did I hook up with a cocktail napkin? Perhaps. But a hookup is a hookup. Okay. I stuck my tongue in something. So Paige is like, well, when you were in the Hamptons, was he who shall not be named there? And Danielle would totally name Voldemort anyway, just so he'd show up and she can ask him to party. Party, why aren't we partying? <laughs> Are we supposed to be partying? Come on, Voldemort. She's like, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Want to make out? <laughs> yeah. Want to make out? She's like, he was there and there was some gas. Like, he was there. Okay, and by the way... Um, it turns out he was there with his new girlfriend, and yes, I think there was overlap. Um, in fact, I think there were lies, and I think there was gaslighting. And Paige is like, wow, that's strange. He doesn't really give me cheating vibe. He just gives me Dave from Garfield vibes. So that's really sad. Did Dave from Garfield cheat on the lasagna? Or <laughs> No, guys. It was totally overlap. When did he break up with her? Before I last summer, like right? 
Wait, last summer, he broke up with her during the summer or after it was over? It was, I think it was, he broke up with her after the last season of Summer House. So he broke up with her after she and Lindsay had her falling out, which was the summer of 2022, in fact. Okay. It's, the timeline's always so weird because it's shot, it's shot last year, it airs this year. It's, it's hard, it's hard. So, um they're like we curse the day he was born and she's like oh my god guys i'm so excited to party guys we're gonna party right <laughs> so then um then sierra's like by the way kyle's gonna pick up a new guy and so then we cut to west which is one of the new guys and he's on a curb so kyle and amanda pick him up poor west talk about talk about freshman hazing he has to ride, ride in a car with kyle and amanda all the way to the hamptons for his first time wow mm -hmm. that's rough <laughs> He's a sports journalist. Um, so they're like, we have room for your bag, but not for you. <laughs> That's a mad day humor. Get used <laughs> to it. So they get in and he gets in and West, um, he was hanging out with Carl and Lindsay a few weeks ago. So they met West through Carl and Lindsay. And, but Carl and Lindsay, they're not gonna be there this first weekend because they're going down to DC. And Kyle's like, he's got swagger. Yeah. He's got like a little mustache. Like, like, uh, like, plink. Yeah, it's really cool. He's like a cool guy. So I really like him. Sports, really cool. So have Carl and Lindsay told you about the house dynamics, Kyle? He's like, he's like well, Lindsay mentioned that she might not be everyone's favorite in the house. She did say that. And man is like, oh my God, did she say that, Kyle? <laughs> And then we go. <laughs> I can't believe Amanda's still doing these shows. Amanda looks exhausted. <laughs> like, and I was even start. Amanda walked into Winter House late. She's like, sorry, I missed my flight. And then she got into bed. And then she would like come randomly stand in the kitchen and just sway back and forth going, party. And then she would go back to bed and then she left. I can't even believe she's still doing this. She had some sort of awful. <laughs> like flu or something right or like she would food poisoning or something that took her out right so that which is so amanda so here she is and then we got cut over to carl and Lindsay, and we see the neon sign that says rat house and then we see like the cutout of Lindsay, and we see the zebra it's like literally the exact same way last season opened up with the two of them <sighs> the big neon sign rat house and <laughs> the cardboard cutout that you can hear <laughs> And then the the rapport we know and love. Babe. 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 What do you think of this dress? That's a really pretty dress. Yeah, because I was looking for red, white, and blue because it's America and we're going to the White House on the 4th of July. Isn't that crazy? Like, who gets invited to the White House? Am I right? It's like crazy. It's like crazy. Like, like maybe Ariana gets invited. So I guess like maybe we're like as big as Ariana. It's like, yeah. Well, I mean, she was like in the White House. Like, we're like the Zealots compared to Ariana. Like, isn't it so cool that we even know her? Like, we're like basically Ariana now. It's like so cool. I thought it was so funny that they talk about how impressed they are with how huge Ariana is as they try to ape some Vanderpump Rules editing for this season. It's pretty funny. As they... As they head to what we later find out is like a sprawling picnic with like thousands of people on the back lawn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're basically so, yellow office. She's like, okay, update. Carl and I have been planning a wedding and wedding planning is busy to say the least. I'm getting married. <laughs> Carl, God bless him, has not been helpful. He is such a guy. <laughs> and we just see Carl working out. Uh, while Lindsay's like talking to vendors, yeah, like this is not like my wedding, it's our wedding featuring me and the Lindsay Hubbard experience. So, like, it would be nice to have like a little bit of help, uh, honey. What are you doing for the wedding? Well, I'm still sober, so there's that. <laughs> That's what he does. That's literally <laughs> what he does daily. My best friend, Danya, is like a powerhouse publicist in DC, which is the nation's capital, in case you didn't know, because like Ariana was there. Yeah, we're like zealous compared to her. I just want to say that again. By the way, did you see how like angry Lindsay's face got when he said that we're zealous compared to Ariana? She's like, um, we're at our level. Don't you ever say we're zealous on camera ever again, Carly Joe. 
Um, not only am I giving a dirty look to you, but my cardboard cutout right behind you is giving a dirty look to it's you. It's like so. Who are you going to see list, bitch? <laughs> it literally is staring at him like that. It's like a haunted house. She's like, yeah, we got an invite from the White House. I mean, for us to go to the White House, like Red House at White House, Red House X White House collab. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's like, La Summer was like, oh, wait, first of all, he's like, well, it's definitely bittersweet because like how many summers? Have we like done 4th of July at the Hamptons? And now we're not gonna be at the Hamptons. We're gonna be like at the White House. So it's like crazy. Do you think they're gonna miss us? And she's like, Gabby will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like last summer was like probably the least fun summer that I've had. Like being in that triangle of drama with like Lindsay and Danielle. Like I just like didn't know how to operate sometimes. Cause I'm Carl, I'm just like a little boy. And like, I just like, you know, like, I don't know what to do, you know? And like Kyle and I were like, not a great place. And like, oh, this could be like my last summer before I get married. And it could be like my last summer before I ever, ever go to the Hamptons. It could be like my last summer where I could like show up and be like, put your weight on me, bro. So like, I just wanna like let loose and like have like a really great last summer. Yeah, like normally summers are me making girls crazy, but last summer was girls making each other crazy. I like felt like I didn't even belong. Yeah, do you realize this could be my last time that I have a whole entire summer where I wake up at 7 a.m. and go to Barry's and come back and say, yeah, I just went to Barry's. Like, that could be the end of an era. It could be my last summer before I get married. I just, I, I just want to leave it behind. So it would be cool to be in the Hamptons, but like the White House, that's even cooler than the Hamptons. God, I love that outfit. Are you going to wear that? It's like, no. Nah. She, because when he says it would be cool to be in the Hamptons, you know, she looks in like, uh, currently too. Danny got this, this imitation. Like, this is the cooler thing. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the cooler thing. It was much cooler to be at the DC. Like, although I kind of miss the Hamptons, but like DC, so like so cool, so cool. We're and he's really DC. trying to fake that it's really cool going to the White House, and it's like yeah. And then they like do their like fakey like we're in such a great relationship hug, and it just. I mean, I can't even believe it lasted till the end of the season. I know because you know it the camera painful. The cameras went down. She's like. For you to even imply that, like, it would be not cool to accept Danya's invitation when she's, like, a powerhouse publicist in D.C. is, like, so wrong of you, girl. Uh, like, you better, you owe Joe Biden an apology. I mean, we got an invitation from Joe Biden's assistant's friend's trainer to be in a lawn with thousands of people. Like, how could you even say that's not as cool as being in the Hamptons, Carly <sighs> Joe? Okay, so then we go to the girls' car, Paige and Danielle and Sierra. And Paige is like, look at us, three single gals. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And... Well, you guys are single, because we have Gabby now, sorry. Um, but I'm not single, but you guys are. How fun for you. Yeah, fun. And then we see Kyle driving, and um, he's like, I just want to be, like, completely candid. Like, last summer was, like, an off summer for us as a group, but, like, we're friends as a core. Like, I got a little complicated. And he basically just says that um, also a guy named Jesse is going to be joining the house, but he's coming a little late because he's officiating, officiating a wedding. Yeah. So here we are. And Daniel's girls. like, um, I'm going to turn Sierra into a hoe because, Sierra, do you know what you need to do this summer? You need to party, Sierra. And she's like, um, I don't know if I'm going to have, like, a hoe era. And Paige is like, yeah, well, okay, why don't we have the era of doing the opposite of what we normally would do? So, for example, I would normally stand up, so I'm going to stay in bed. <laughs> for Wait, this that's not season. your opposite, Paige. No, it, it totally is. It, it really is. is. Yeah. Sierra's like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm in my opposite era. Oh, good. Can we actually call that your nothing on your bed era? Let's do it that. Let's call it that. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to be in my bad bitch era because I like to party. <laughs> okay, Danielle. Everyone's wow. like, ooh, oh God. You know, everybody's looking at each other like, oh, Jesus. She's still broken. No <laughs> one fakes Danielle. <laughs> I'm in my on fleek era. On fleek, guys. So yeah, I'm going to uh, prioritize myself. Am I libido? Am I right? Yeah. Anybody want to bounce on this? Boom, 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 boom. I am. I am so mortified that this is what we had to hitch our ride onto right now. Like our little literal hitched ride. <laughs> She's driving. Um, so they they show up and they walk into the house and they're like, oh my god, there's like a bar now because they like set up a tiny bar in one of the rooms. They're like, cool, bad bitch era begins now. Also, it's my like hanging out at the bar in the house era. It's so cool. And Paige is like, oh my god, I think they actually added a wall over there. Is that a wall? Oh, 
Danielle, look, they've they've got a place for you to stand over there on date nights. <laughs> School dance nights. Just go ahead, stand up against that thing. Oh, oh so we're gonna make up against that fucking wall. So I'm horny this season. That's right. Mm. Sierra, are you moonwalking into the house? It's my opposite season, going in the opposite direction. I'm walking backwards now. <laughs> opposite. Did you get a flu shot? <laughs> Craig was right. <laughs> So um, then the other group, uh, Amanda and Kyle's car shows up and they meet West and Paige is like, okay, so it's West with a hard T. Oh my God, so stupid. I'm in my, oh my God, I can't believe this guy era. Uh, West Wilson, that's his name, West Wilson. And they're all drinking the new flavor of Loverboy, Limoncello. <laughs> and Kyle's like, yeah, let me take you to the Malfi Coast real quick. <laughs> Wow, um, Kyle, I appreciate you um, trying to show your limoncello lover boy, but I'm still in the process of believing that there's someone in our house named West Wilson. Can you believe it? that's like ridiculous, guys? Can we go to the bed and like laugh at West Wilson? Like, so, um, let me get this straight. No one fixed Danielle, and you've still got a mullet. So, are we just giving up? Is this just the era of giving up? <laughs> or okay, so. Um, Danielle is broken. You've got a mullet. You're still shilling lover boy. And there's some other guy in the house named Wes Wilson. So are we just in the, I don't even know what I'm going to do with myself summer era. Cause that's what it feels like. And Amanda's like, West offered to make quesadillas. Wow. <laughs> West really, I love this guy's first of all, totally straight. <laughs> because This guy's just coming in. Like, I don't even give a fuck. I'm going to choose the easiest thing that's ever yeah. been said. And I'm just going to make that. <laughs> okay, so um, while West Wilson, I mean, are we are we laughing about that yet? Because I just really want to laugh about it. So while West Wilson is making his quesadillas, Amanda, what's your era? She goes, like, um, I'm in my no patience era. Aww. Oh God, great! So Amanda's not going to make <laughs> any fucking like, effort this season either. Yeah, huh? wow, yeah, you're going to be like, annoyed Ooh. with Kyle, Amanda. Sounds fine. <laughs> And in fact, that's what she says. She goes, and it's for Kyle specifically. That's like just kind of like what I'm stuck with. That's my era. Oh, wow. Sounds like a really fun twist on our era game. Thanks. Yeah. And she tells us, there's a reason I come to this house. To spend time with people, not Kyle. <laughs> so Kyle comes back and he's like, all right, guys, there's only seven of us right now. But can we still party? Because like Jesse's coming tomorrow. And like he's, you know, just so everyone knows, he's maybe Jesse's height. Or, or sorry, maybe Carl's height. Yeah, and they're like, "Oh my god, oh my another god, tall, tall person!" Oh. Tall person, like that's like the most exciting thing. I'm like in my tall person era. Um, they Daniel's also... like, "Yeah, I fuck tall people. I'm gonna <laughs> fuck him, everybody. Totally fuck." I'm him a boss tall, bitch. I already got a little giant ladder, so I can climb up and just fuck his face. Yeah. Um. Also, by the way, Amanda says that like over the winter she took a pregnancy test, and ever since things have been like really weird with her and Kyle because like I guess it made them realize that like starting a family might be a viable thing and they realize they don't like each other and maybe they shouldn't start a family I, I guess so they're all excited about a tall person and West is like well I don't consider myself short but I'm not tall you're short okay <laughs> you're not even a head taller than Kyle and it's okay you don't need yeah. to try and convince us that you're not short with your words, okay? Because eventually goes, you're going to try to ride a roller coaster with us and we're going to all know the truth. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And like, I don't know if these girls are shallow or not. Shallow. The answer is shallow. You don't have <laughs> shallow. He goes, but like, if it's a new tall guy, my personality is just going to have to be that much taller. And I, I did have a girl tell me once that I read tall, but uh, I, and I obviously never forgot that. I like Wes because he's short, but he's and he's aging too. Like he's not a spring chicken, you know. He's not like one of the twenty-year-olds they bring into this house. West is like you know, like a thick, short dude in his forties, maybe, <laughs> who's wearing too much pancake makeup and who's gonna make the height up with teenage boy forward combed curly hair. That's and I his, appreciate that he realizes. Plan. Yeah, he has to like really read much taller. And I appreciate that he also has the naivete of like a younger person. Like when he says, I don't know if these girls are shallow or not. It's like, oh, that's, it's so sweet that he opens up the consideration that they might not be shallow. Yeah. But you're on Bravo. 
<laughs> so uh, Sierra's like, who's going to get my luggage out of the car? <laughs> and Gabby's like, um, West Conrad Wilson, maybe? Maybe you can do that? And Paige is like, um, I feel like West Conrad Wilson wrote the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> yes. Yeah. By the way, it's funny because I always tell Craig he looked like he just came off the Mayflower. And all the girls go, for sure. For <laughs> sure. He does have Mayflower energy. He's in his Mayflower era. He has native murdering energy. It's yeah. so hot. Guess so, what? So, yeah. Want to hear he Googled... about Craig? Yeah, oh, say it. Other me, you say it, other me. Yeah. So, guys, Craig Googled what is rigatoni when we were in Italy. Like, oh he couldn't even remember the shape of the pizza. <laughs> he, Amanda goes, he Googled rigatoni. <laughs> Gabby goes, um, that's not even a niche noodle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's like rigatoni ignorant. <laughs> he's like a sweet child boyfriend. I've been taking care of him now for two years, and currently we're doing long distance, but I feel like in a good rhythm where he says, Paige, I want more time with you, and I can hang up. <laughs> yeah, and we had a conversation where I assured him I'm not going anywhere. Literally, I'm not going to Charleston. I'm specifically not physically going anywhere near him. And so, like, he's been pretty chill ever since. Yeah, I'm going to do what I want to do. And right now, that is trying to figure out why someone would name their child West yeah. Wilson. I'm just currently, I'm just going to be here in the Hamptons with people who understand the difference between rigatoni and tortellini. That's it. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I don't know about this crew. So <laughs> getting to know West. Okay, so <clears throat> West and Sierra are talking and he's like, anyone not from New York? Uh, yeah, I got New York in 2018. Uh, my home is Missouri. My dad's a rancher, a cattle rancher to be specific. And Sierra's like, oh my God, a cattle rancher? <gasps> is he married? I want a cattle rancher. Is he taller than you? Please say you got your shortness from your mom. And he's like, yeah, my family, we all have, we all have di very different lives. My mom's an OBGYN and has provided a lot for the family. Also tall, just want to put that out there. I come from tall people. And my dad is a cattle rancher, also tall. See, if I tell everyone my family is tall, I'll just be tall, right? So he was a former football player, and he was a coach. I mean, he did rodeos now. And anyway, dinner is always interesting. We talk about vaginas and cows, grades of vaginal tears during childbirth. There are four grades, one to four. I was a three. So now they start talking about rooms. And uh, Danielle's like, I want this room that I had before, but this time I'm going to make memories in that bed. This kind. <laughs> yeah, fucking memories. Everyone's like, just just leave her alone. She's She's been going through something. So Paige, is, Paige gets the primary bedroom. She just claims it, which is, she's like, I just, I've never had my own room. So I just want to have like a really big room with a big bed. And Wes goes to help her with the bags. And he's like, wow, Paige. Do you have heavy stuff? Also, I really appreciate that you have tiny bag. Just sort of makes me look taller. Just take any help I can get. So he's like, is this a stuffed animal? She's like, it's a squishmallow. He goes, <laughs> oh, really? What is his What is his name? She goes, um, it's a girl also. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Georgette, and she hates you. She only wants to be around tall humans. <laughs> she says you're not worth the number three tear. So... <laughs> She's like, I don't care if you were a number three tear. It doesn't make you taller. Yeah. So West is like, um, I guess you guys just choose your rooms and tell me where mine is. And they're like, choose your own, weirdo. Like, why do you have to be like that? And Amanda, in their room, Amanda's like, Kyle, I don't want your clothes to touch my clothes. <laughs> Kyle. So now West is going to start making his quesadilla dinner and Kyle's setting up speakers because uh, he loves setting up speakers. He's basically like that kind of bro. He's like a speaker bro. And so Danielle's, okay, guys, um, Kyle's setting up speakers. So what's the name of this club? I've always like Club Sand. Yeah. Danielle is at this point just turning into everyone's um, aunt who wants to be down. You know, <laughs> it's like, okay, there's Aunt Danielle. Yeah, she got there club real sand. quick. And Paige is like, I like that name. Kyle's like, I like that name. She's like, you know what? I'm going to put my finger right up your ass. <laughs> yeah. So um, then Sierra's like helping West in the kitchen. Because, you know, she's ready to cook with some gas or oil or grease. Because Sierra's and always the first on the new hottest guy, you know? Yeah. And they all kind of concede to her, too. They're just like, okay, she's the model. <laughs> like... Let's let Sierra try him out first. But uh, Sierra always gets the first try. And so she's in there, you know, working her Sierra magic, as we've seen it 
just work over and over again, season after season on this show, uh, pretending that she likes cooking, basically. So yes. she's he's asking about her first job, and she's like, oh, Hollister's. Is it a restaurant, or what'd she say? Hollister. Hollister. You know, the you know, like it's like Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh, and so oh. And he goes, well, yeah, you need to start with a shitty job, you know, one where people are mean to you. She goes, yeah, it builds charisma. Look at me now. <laughs> I'm like, maybe, uh, maybe take another gig Did it at skip Cheddar's. A generation. Or... <laughs> I'm like, I think we need to. I think we need to, <laughs> to get some more time there. Uh, Did down the in intern the... <laughs> next to you get an extra dose, or <laughs> Did you take a lot of vacation days? We need to. <laughs> let's work on the. So Sierra's like, I really miss Georgia, but like, I just couldn't live there. It's like all about the friends you make and. I was able to make some really good friends, but like Paige, oh my God, I was so pissed at Paige because I moved to New York City and she got a boyfriend right away. I was like, bitch, you're supposed to be going out with me in New York City. That was some riz. I just gave you some straight up riz. And West is like, well, everyone wants to find someone, but are you a single girl or are you a dater? And she goes, um, like I'm in the period where I want to find someone, but just to date. He's like, oh, okay, okay. That's what a way to not answer a question, you know. So Paige and Amanda are watching, and they're like, oh my god, look at those two. They're like totally into each other. This is yeah. crazy. I mean, Sierra is pretending that she likes moving around and smiling. Yeah, she like never cooks. Is she in her cooking era right now? This is wild. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, she just picked up a spatula and put it back down again. Oh my god, she's like really into him. So then Danielle's like, guys, guys, let's make some party music. We're going to party. <laughs> Could someone get Danielle a menial labor job, please? She needs to work on her charisma, too. I just want to put that out there. So um, Paige is like, oh, my God. Speaking of Danielle, we were talking about Lindsay coming. And Danielle was like, cool. What do you think that means? Yeah, that's just how she always is. Like, she gets in her feelings about it. And I know she had, like you know, reservations, because I think it's like spending time with your eggs, which actually seems really good right about now. Oh my God. Um, Did they talk at your event? Remember you had an event for Lover Boy? Did you, did they talk? And Amanda's like, yeah, they were in the same room together and like, they were like existing, but they're like not friends. And like, she's capable of just being in the same room, you know, and just having fun, preaching to the choir. And by the way, we are the choir. We're just like a really well-dressed choir. Do you ever notice how good we are? Yeah. So Paige says that her plan this summer is that she's just going to have the same plan that she's had with Lindsay ever since she came to the house, which is try to be nice, try to be friendly. And then when Lindsay does something to her, she's just going to lose her mind. And then we, uh, Kyle and Danielle talk about like how proud Kyle is that Danielle's moving on with her life. You know, she had a rough year and she's like, yeah, I lost my best friend, my boyfriend. And over the winter, I got my mojo back. I was like, oh my God, that is so sad that you think of the winter house season as getting your mojo back. I mean, that is just embarrassing. She says, I did learn some lessons. And then it cuts to Alex being like, yeah, I was hoping more for friendship. And by friendship, I mean, please pretend you don't know me next time you see me, please. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, whatever Danielle was saying was like really interesting, but like, I just want to say, I'm like so hungry. I'm like, famished i'm like literally starving i am in my starving era right now i'm hungry and west is like Paige, you think you're gonna do the dishes before we go out or after sick how dare you i've never done a dish <laughs> i've done a dish since the 2000s so he is serving these quesadillas he made they are all burnt they're burnt oh, and here's the thing not only one of them is burnt they're literally all uniformly black who does the, who cooks a quesadilla like that and then brags about it yeah, and they all seem really impressed by it. Um, it's one thing to have like blackened fish or something, or like a blackened not chicken, bread. Thing, but like not bread blackened, not blackened quesadilla. Sir. Yeah, no. <laughs> so they're eating it, they're enjoying it, and they're happy that it's like a small group, and that tonight is gonna be carnival night. I'm like, oh my god, are you guys gonna do a carnival theme party on this thing? But later on, we find out it's an actual carnival they go to, which I appreciate. So Danielle's like, um, hard 30. And then we meet down here at club set. Okay, everyone, everyone. Yeah. Okay. So they go to take showers and stuff. 
And then Kyle and Amanda just aren't happy, guys. Like, I feel like we're, like, not on the same team. And I just want our future. Ugh. And then Amanda's like, go shower in your room, Kyle. Because it's definitely not the same room I'm staying in, Kyle. Because Kyle, what set this, sets this off is that, like, because um, they're all going off to change and everything. And there's still leftover quesadillas. And Kyle's like, so how long can we leave these? Like, a couple hours out? And she's like, Kyle, I literally gave you foil to Wrap them in and put them in the refrigerator, Kyle. Oh, it's gonna be quite a season. Guys. Oh, wow! It's gonna be wow! Quite okay. A season. A good old fashioned uh, tinfoil fight. <laughs> and so now the girls are talking about how cute West is, and Paige is like, "I mean, he actually gets hotter the more he talks. I was gonna say taller, but it's not that good." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and Sierra's like, yeah, he fits right in. He's a chatter. It's like, yeah, Sierra, fitting in right with Sierra, also a big chatter. Big Huge chat, chatter. Sierra. Huge chatter. <laughs> She's like, not going to lie, he's impressing me. You know why? He's inquisitive. Like, <laughs> how many guys in New York City are, like, inquisitive, you know? I mean, you would think it would be, like, simple math, but no. <laughs> I love this. They just are like... Yeah, he gets hotter and hotter the more you talk to him. He's so interesting. He's really great. He's so wonderful. There's a tall person coming in. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, Kyle's running around naked as usual, and Amanda's like, put a towel on, you idiot. Oh. So now they're getting really ready on for the one. party. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, she's really on one. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I think that, like, I'm sorry. Well, I know they both contribute to this very toxic relationship, and then Kyle is no, no... Angel, but I cannot stand when people call their loved ones idiots. Like, I think that's like so wrong to do that to someone that you love. That's my um, moral stance. I don't know. I mean, I blame the mullet. You know what I mean? I can't stand up for Kyle when he's got that mullet. I will say Amanda sucks, but <laughs> uh, I will I'm not saying that Kyle say doesn't contribute Kyle to it. Kyle probably makes her crazy, but yeah, Amanda sucks. And also, even if Kyle is making her crazy, Amanda should know well enough by now to let Kyle, let the audience know why Kyle is making you crazy. Because right now you just look like a sucky person. Like you suck. Get out of here. It's just supposed to be fun. Amanda, not fun. Yeah, I have no doubt. And I will, I will roast Kyle when he, when it's time for him to be roasted. But I'm like, I'm like, Jesus, like, don't call your, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's so, I don't know. I'm just like, I, I think that's bad. I'm like, I would never. So um, Amanda's like, okay. So they, they, they gather downstairs and they're like, oh, Amanda. And she's like, yeah, I'm going for a look that's like going to a carnival where there's children. And Paige is like, hmm. With your nipples out? <laughs> Kyle's like, yeah, I can see your nipples. Like, Amanda's got nipples. So they go to the carnival, and they walk up to the whack-a-mole game. And Amanda's like, they misspelled guacamole. That's my <laughs> thing. And they're all exceptionally good at carnival games. <laughs> they are get out there. All of them. They're just, like, popping balloons. They emerge with so many stuffed animals. I have, like... I'm lucky if I, I I went to the Orange County Fair. I spent four hours there, and I came out with a stuffed lobster, a little stuffed lobster that's three inches long. And they're coming out with enormous, enormous stuffed animals. I think this is like a rich people because it's in the Hamptons, so it's like for rich people where they just make them all feel like studs. Yeah, and they just make it easier for them. Yeah, they just make it easier. I don't think these are real carnies. I think these are just like let's do what those poor people do, Carn carnival thing, you know. It's Little pop balloons. They don't rig any of the games. It's just all very easy. Yeah. So um, then Wes like piles a bunch of stuffed animals on Sierra so he can get a beer. And she's like, oh my God, are you being like serious right now? And he's like, yeah, I think it's kind of funny. She's like, luckily for you, I'm in my like down withholding a bunch of stuffed animals era. So like fine. And Kyle wins a huge banana with uh, like Rastafarian hair. Yes, and Amanda's right. like, um, is that, what'd you say? It's got dreads. With dreads, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. My <laughs> vocabulary is lacking. This is my, like, I don't care about words era. So. <laughs> this is Ben and Ronnie's um, third recap of the day era. So <laughs> our brain cells are also in our rotting era. <laughs> so Matt is like, oh, my God, is that banana for me, Kyle? And he's like, I mean, it is for you, but I'm excited about it. 
She's like, oh my God, you're taking the banana. It's like, okay, okay. Well, look, this is what I wanted for the summer. Cause like, I know you know, like, I know you like uh, hanging out with friends separately and stuff, but you know, I just want to spend more time together. Cause like, we're like the anti-attached at the cu hip couple. You know what I mean? And she's like, but it's your fault because every time I ask you to come out of your office, you're like, no. And then so I got used to not hanging out with you. Now you want to hang out with me, but you can't hang out with me. Cause I already got used to not hanging out with you guys. Uh, yeah. So like now I, I want that back a little bit. And she goes, but it doesn't work like that. And he's like, but and by the way, he's also wasted. He's like, well, but so like I go over a trip and I'm like away for four, five, six days. And I come home and like, I don't expect you to jump in my arms, but I do kind of like miss you. And I'm I like, I do like, do you not, you don't miss, you don't miss me. Kyle's miss like me. wasted and gross and sloppy too early every single night. Yeah. At some point, it's just a turn off, dude. Like, who yeah, would want to fuck that? You're some aging dude walking around in a mullet, wasted before everyone else, thinking it's cute to have scenes with the banana. You know? Like, right. And so this is where it's like, well, now I can understand why Amanda is at her wit's end with this guy. But then she's like, yeah, but like when I leave, I miss you too. And I'm home and I'm just like, I'm just taking care of dogs and watching TV. So I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, like Kyle has been a workaholic since season one so he's always been a workaholic and so you married him trying to change him from that too so also know what you signed up for i can't with this like i've talked about this couple too much you know what i mean i want to like for the spirit of the recap i would love to have a conversation with you but it's the same thing amanda's a whiny brat and kyle's an annoying aged frat boy like i don't know what else to tell you at this point you know what i mean both of you do better okay both of you <laughs> Ronnie's in his do better era. I'm in my, I can't Ronnie's talk about your terrible relationship anymore. Okay. <laughs> Get better relationships and come back. Try again. You know? Well, I kind of want to like go back to the basics where we're like a little bit more like inseparable. And like, I started to feel like I'm like the only one that misses something in the relationship. She's like, well, we'll use this summer to get our groove back. We'll figure it out. And we, Where'd you go? Are you, how did you already get to the top of that Ferris wheel without me? I'm with my best friend, the banana. So now Kyle films some scenes with the banana. Cause you Mom. know, Kyle loves an inanimate object friend on the show. <laughs> they, they have those every year. So um, now Sierra and West are on like the Ferris wheel and now it's time to go home. So Amanda's still bitching about Kyle. She's like, I can't believe Kyle had the audacity to tell me I didn't hang out with Kyle, Kyle. <laughs> I know. And then Gabby uh, throws up. And then um, now, and Wes and Kyle are like line dancing. And then Paige and the girls are on the big, the big primary bed. And Paige tells Daniel, oh my God, your hair looks so freaking good right now. Wow, congratulations. You're in your good hair era. Oh, well, now you're out of it. You didn't have to mm -hmm. touch it. Um, so everyone, but then everyone winds up piling on the bed to hang out and Paige is like, oh my God, we've like never had like the entire group on the bed all at once. Like this is like such a moment. Like I'm going to cry. Also, it means that when people make fun of me for always being in the bed, they have to make fun of you guys too. So I'm not alone in this anymore. Sorry. And Kyle goes, backstory, Paige loves beds. <laughs> and then, um, everyone gets off the bed now they and go then. Down. They so West has a hot room, so they're like, why don't you just move? Like, why are you putting yourself in hell? There's still r open rooms, dummy. So then uh, the next day, West is in the kitchen shirtless cooking, and uh, he, he starts making... He makes his making... bed very well, by the way. I want to say he makes a very good bed. Mm. Well, there you just... go. Yeah. I'm in my well, observing West. beds era. Mm -hmm. So um, he's making breakfast with Gabby. They're going to make bacon and eggs. And then Kyle and Amanda are talking and Kyle's like, I remember when this room was hot last year. And she's like, you keep saying that, but how much time did you even spend in here, Kyle? He's like, wow, you really need to drop the attitude, Amanda. <laughs> so then now more breakfast making and Sierra and Paige are in bed. And Sierra's like, I had like so much fun at the carnival. I don't know, like, I feel like my charisma just like, became twice as charismatic and Paige is like yeah and how about like everyone in that bed remember like everyone got into the bed with us like that was like I just I don't think the house has ever laughed so much I think it's just like really nice not having two geriatric people that we have to like explain all our jokes to around you know it's just like smooth and easy and this happens on every show when they get their way and get rid of the person that they don't like it's boring okay 
Like, I'm sorry, but do you guys think it's fun? This is not fun to watch, okay? I need some crazy ass lens. Fun for them, house. less fun for us. Honestly, yeah. though, to be honest, Ronnie, I was just glad that they weren't like doing a pirate party or a wacky 80s party or everyone dressed well, up like Kyle. sharks party, you know? And that's yeah, also that's Winter Kyle. House. It's also Winter House. Yeah. Oh, it's this house. This house. It's up to you. Yeah. But house. Winter House, they just shove it all in together. It's like Ultimate right. Girls Trip, where they just, they're like, you're staying right here and you're doing the things we like over and over for two weeks. It's like you have, we have a, uh, an accelerated production schedule of five days. So we have to make sure you do everything all at once and hopefully we get something good out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, Lindsay, so Paige is talking about like how much it's fun it is without old people. And Lindsay's like, <laughs> I'm happy for it. So we're just, we're in DC. We just checked in. I hope I don't look like a tourist. She's in like a flag, an American flag short shorts and an American flag, you know, top <laughs> to work out. And like, wow. Say America. hi, babes. Say hi, babes. Oh, hi, hi. Say hi, ladder babes. It's America. Hi, hi. Also, Lindsay's, um, I don't know, is this the season when this changed? But her little occupation that they put down when they say Lindsay, it now says influencer. Which, how long has she been an, uh, an official influencer on this show? Or is that new this season? I don't know. She might have gotten that title when her and Carl went full on getting the Kia and then doing those like commercials for things together. Mm -hmm. Remember when they were like, we're doing couples commercials. So... <laughs> So back at the house, Paige is like, so Sierra, so we have like a new guy coming. And if he can't like get down with the bed, like he's going to have to be out of the house. And then Kyle and Amanda are in the kitchen and um, Kyle, like we find out that Mon, like Kyle brought Mon, the, the giant banana into the bed. And, and basically, basically the banana, when I say Mon, the, they named the banana Mon, like, hey, Mon. Uh, the banana was like a giant barrier, like a wall in that bed. Yeah. And so Amanda's like, <laughs> you're like, I thought you were going to keep going. I'm you're sorry. Like, I don't, and Amanda been... and Kyle. I don't know how many times <laughs> I'll I need take to it. explain. I'll take you. it yeah. from here. So Amanda's like, Amanda's like, Kyle had a whole conversation with me about how I don't hang out with him enough. And then I don't spend enough time with him. But then you don't hang out with me when I came home. Like you don't miss all that stuff. But then like last night he like gets on the Ferris wheel without me and puts like, Mon in the bed, like, and he's like, "Come on!" And she's like, "Yeah, let's just see how you even hang out with me today. You're gonna like how hang out with everybody else other than me." Here's my note: B one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fourteen O's to spell boring. Okay, you got a 14 0 boring from me, man. <laughs> okay, so now we go back to breakfast and uh, they start talking about what friends are coming to their big 4th of July party. And Danielle's like, Well, Sierra, we're gonna party. I'm gonna dare you. I dare you to make out with someone, Sierra. I dare you, Sierra. What are you gonna dare me to do? You should make, dare me to make out with somebody. <laughs> and then, and Sierra goes, Well, I dare you to, I don't know, do I have to play this game with her? Okay, I'll do it. I dare you to touch an attractive person's nipples. That was fun, right? And she's like, oh my God, yeah, fun. Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Danielle's here. So she touches Wes's nipples. And then Gabby's like, guys, I have a surprise. So last summer, I threw a party that was lackluster to say the least, but as a gesture for coming back to this house, I was like, what do we need? What does this group need? A mechanical shark. <laughs> like, Unless okay. it's big enough to take Amanda. I mean, <laughs> honestly, just bring some nachos. You know what I mean? So now they do decorators, and um, Paige calls Craig, and uh, he's like, hey, chicken. She's like, hey, chicken. He's like, I'm back in Charleston. What'd you have for breakfast? And she's like, oh, my God. Thank you so much for asking, Craig. I had bacon. Because you know, you know they had to have that conversation where she's like, yeah. every single time you call, you just call me and start talking to me like a, a, a freaking wall. You don't know a thing about me, Craig. Like, I do things. Really? Like, what do you do? Like, I had breakfast. What'd you have for breakfast? Oh my God, thank you. I will marry <laughs> you. I will marry you. Well, I wanted to ask you about you before me telling you about me. So you told me about bacon, so that counts. And so so anyway, um, Saratoga is going to be like a little more exciting for us this year because I, I'm going to buy a racehorse. <laughs> um, no, you're not. No, you're not. Okay, I'm just going to say this right now. 
that is the dumbest decision I've ever heard you tell me. And you've told me a lot of dumb decisions you made. That is dumber than the soccer team, dumber than the restaurant, dumber than the hot air balloon, dumber than the oil rig that you wanted to build in the middle of Manhattan. This is the dumbest thing you've ever come up with, Craig. And he is doing the restaurant with Austin. He's doing that. Uh, that's funny, a soccer team. She goes, a couple of weeks ago, he said he's buying a soccer team in London because he watched Welcome to Wrexham once. So, <laughs> like, he's like trying suddenly trying to be like Ryan Reynolds. Okay, like I'm over here trying to do my best, Blake Lively, but I do have my concerns. So then, uh, Lindsay and Carl call Gabby, and Gabby's like, "Oh my God, you guys, they're at the White House," and everyone's like, "We don't care." And Lindsay's like, "Oh my God, uh, how's it going?" Uh, <laughs> and Gabby's like, "Guys, I just want to tell you, everyone here is having like the best time that we've ever had." <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's crazy because like all seven of us are together and we're like, who's missing? And like, it's literally no one is missing. Oh. I mean, we're missing. Um, you are. You No, totally, totally. You guys are missing. What are you guys missing from? Are you missing from this but, house? Like, guys, like seriously, like when I tell you the house is the most amazing it's ever been, I mean it. And Lindsay goes, yeah. okay, well, that's good. <laughs> no, 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 no. All, I'm not saying, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, Ever since you guys have not been here, the house has been amazing. But of course we miss you. But we're just saying the house is just like literally so much better than it ever has been in the history of this house with you guys not here. It's just like crazy. And Danielle's like, yeah, last summer really fucked me up. But like, I hope we can get along. But like, let's make no mistake. I hated that bitch. That <laughs> I hope it can work out. Because like, I'm party then. I'm party Danielle now. Yeah. So they're setting up for this party and just like it's 4th of July. And for some reason, they have like a bunch of like inflatable spaceships and Paige is like disgusted by them. She's like, um, what is this spaceship thing that this turned into? Disgusting. I hate NASA. And then um, there's like just setting up and everything. And oh my God, so time for Carl Cam. Carl Cam at the White House. Oh my God, Carl, take a picture of me and Joe Biden. I don't see Joe Biden. <laughs> Carl, make it up. Carl, God. Carl, so what? Are we doing like two cameras for this? Or like, what's going on? Because I'm kind of running the camera right now. It's like, oh, sorry, babe. I'll put my camera away. Thank you. And this is where we see them on the White House lawn with 9 million people. <laughs> Right. It's like a big public event. It's basically like going to the public pool the first day it opens, blankets everywhere, tons of people. and It looks so uninteresting. <laughs> it's like I would never choose this over the Hamptons. So uh, then back, Kyle and West are talking about the carnival, and Kyle's like, so on the Ferris wheel, were you purposely gravitating towards the era? Like, did you lay on any thick moves? Because, you know, I mean, is, are you into her? You know, West is just like, yeah, feels right. Feels right. So uh, meanwhile, Paige is like really excited to see the new guy. And Sierra's like, yeah, when does he get here? I hear he's tall. He's tall, right? Jesse Solomon works in finance. Jesse Solomon, he's 6'4". He's tall, right? He's tall. He's tall. I'm, I'm, he's tall. 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 It's like, okay, Sierra, you need to just like calm your lady boner for a second. So Kyle's like, well, I don't know, man, but I've never seen her cook with somebody. So that's got to be a good sign. And he's like, yeah, feels really good. But I know a tall guy's come in. And... Um, he tells us basically that he's like, yeah, I'm the only guy here, so I can't read too much into it. And this guy might be tall. So and Carl's like, oh, by the way, this guy might come in hot. Uh, and the girls love a tall guy. He's like, damn it. <laughs> and he's, yeah. So uh, he's like, well, it's OK. I'll take a step back. So now Jesse arrives and he goes, it's Jesse, which is a really annoying way to, to enter is to sort of just be like, say your name. So the girls are like, oh my God, Jesse Solomon? Jesse Solomon, are you tall? Uh, that, that voice sounds tall. I feel like that voice, when he said it's Jesse, it came from like the ceiling and then descended on our ears. It doesn't come from the floor and come up. So I'm pretty sure he's tall. It's tall. It That's was tall basically voice. like if a lighthouse could speak. <laughs> it was like I could hear like a ref blow a whistle because it was like I was at an NBA game. That was a tall voice. It's like, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Paige. You're so tall. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I know. And Sierra's like, guys, Jesse Solomon, Solomon's here, Solomon's here. Oh my God, Jesse Solomon, Jesse Solomon. Oh, Kyle, Jesse he's Solomon. Like, he's like, why do I have to be a two name guy, guys? Can I just be a Jesse? <laughs> and he's got this like big, huge smile. And Dimples. this guy looks like a total 
total dickweed. I would not trust this guy as far as I can throw. I this would never trust this guy. And I've bought so many cell phones from this guy. I can just tell you that this... right now. Like, I bought the Sidekick. I bought the T-Mobile Sidekick when I didn't even want a new phone from this guy. He just tricked me into it. This guy... He this is this is this is danger danger redhead. This is a guy with tall privilege who's hot and works in finance. Like it could not be more red flags. He's really yeah. hot. <laughs> so um, of course they're all like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And West is like, oh fuck, here comes this guy, a tall guy with a smile that goes ear to ear. Not worried at all. Not worried at all. Yeah. And Sierra's like, oh my God, how big are you? Three, uh, uh, six, three and a half, four. You might, you might, you might be six five. You might be six five. Let's say you're six six. Let's go there. Might be. (laughs) So uh, he's getting situated in his room, and everyone's like, oh my God. And um, Kyle's trying to coordinate with Amanda's shirt, and she doesn't really care. And uh, Kyle talks about how we. He met Jesse out in New York, and Jesse is single and making the most of it, aka fuckboy, big big time fuckboy. Yeah. Um, so then uh, guest arrivals and stuff, and Gabby and Amanda and Sierra and Jesse are all talking, and they're asking questions to Jesse. Uh, Amanda's like, "So you grew up where? Where did you grow up? What part? Okay, do you like girls? What kind of girls do you like? What's the worst thing you've ever done? Okay, what's the most <laughs> interesting you thing you've ever done? Have you ever like ignored your girlfriend to go hang out with a big stuffed banana? I don't know. If so you could like... hang out with me or a banana." With dreads what would it be (laughs) he's like um well uh my name's jesse and i grew up north of the suburbs of chicago um i have a question did you grow up north of the suburbs or were you just like raised in chicago and just got so tall that your head wound up in north of chicago because you're like really tall were you raised in the mountains of chicago (laughs) were you a mountain of chicago what's taller you or or the chrysler building what's it like being able to feel rain first (laughs) <laughs> what was it like when a bird first hit you in the head because it thought it was trying to fly over you but it hit you because you were too tall he's like well uh, an interesting thing about me is i studied jazz vocal performance uh, it was at my bar mitzvah when i found out i was above average in singing listen i've been to a lot of bar mitzvahs in my life i've never said that about one pe- person being bar or bat mitzvah never i don't think anyone's ever left being like wow what a voice you know, you don't you don't understand when you are in a Jewish family, this is what happens. Oh my god, you have the voice of an angel. That is an angel, is an angel. He should study music. You know what? He should. That was tears came to my eyes. You know what? Tears, we were all crying. I was talking, I was talking to my wife. We cried at your son at the Torah. You know what? We're gonna push him into vocal lessons. Jesse, you're taking singing lessons. <laughs> really? You are honestly the voice. The voice of Hashem just came down. This coming out of that mouth are true. You know what? If you could be a boy, Barbara Streisand, that's who you would be. Because your voice, I tell you, you know what? It may be even better than Barbara's. It was better than Barbara's. That's how that happens. That's it. We're calling him Boybra. Happy <laughs> Bat Mitzvah. Your name is now Boybra Streisand. By the way, did you die? Because I definitely died when he said, I studied vocal jazz performance in college. And then Sierra and Paige are like, we love jazz. <laughs> what? You do not. <laughs> oh my god jazz we totally love we're in our jazz era we've been in our jazz era all our lives actually now that we think about you it you know we if jazz Wes so said that they would have been like jazz is so gross that's so stupid that's like Ugh. a short person's music <laughs> short people love jazz <laughs> gross <laughs> It's like, yeah, ja- vocal jazz performance at my bar mitzvah we love bar mitzvahs oh my god such an honor like mazel tov if, if jazz if jazz was reachable it would be on like the lowest shelf of music <laughs> Jazz is gross. <laughs> yeah, we love we love jazz. So he so, kind of gives us a sample of his singing. He's like, "Open pit barbecue sauce." <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does say "open pit barbecue sauce." <laughs> so then Kyle and, and Paige are. By talking. the way, I just want to say the producer also totally in love with this guy. She's like, "Oh my god, could you sing that again? That was great. This is going in the show, Jesse." So Kyle pulls Paige aside to talk. He's like, I want to talk about Amanda. She's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I picked up you're having trouble already. He's like, she just shuts me down. Like, I mean, like, I just wanted to, like, milk a lot of work for us. Like, are we even going to be together? Are we going to have babies? I mean, what are we going to do? She's like, um, am I nodding enough? I just want it to seem like I care. 
Kyle, I know this is a very important thing for you, but I really need to get to the jazz Wikipedia before I talk to Jesse again. So can we wrap this up? I know I'm pretending to listen to you, but I'm just wondering if it hurts to hit your head on a star. <laughs> Do you know who Dizzy Gillespie is? I feel like I should follow up on that. I think it's someone to do it has something to do with jazz. Um, so Paige is like, um, I have formed such a great relationship and a friendship with Kyle over the past couple of years, you know, and I feel like we've gotten really close or more like he's gotten close to me where he talks and I just nod. But like, that's cool. And so anyway, his relationship is fucked. So she goes and immediately tells Amanda, of course. She's like, you know, I mean, I think he's just comfortable complaining to me before he actually goes to you with it. For example, Amanda's like, oh my God, I'm so bored with this. I hate him. It's like, but it was very deep, our heart to heart. And you know, he wants he wants you to feel 50-50. And she's like, oh my God. But then he hung out with a banana. And then meanwhile, Sierra is just like, the girls are, the, all the girls are on a day bed. They're like, oh my God, we found a bed, but it's outdoors. This is like amazing. And Sierra's like, I think just like the seven of us, like that was a magical thing. I think it was like perfect. And like, maybe if we see Carl and Lindsay, we should put up a sign that says no key is allowed and like, just keep it the four, all of us, the seven of us. And then, <laughs> yeah, they're really is, trying to make that, they're really trying to get the audience to agree with them. Like, oh my God, isn't this fun? This is totally the new cast. And then Paige is like, oh yeah, but actually, you know, I think it was like good the seven of us, but also like Jesse like oh my god he's so tall he's like so tall like <laughs> like obviously like J jesse solomon and they're like well what about like between west or jesse 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 he didn't let me ask finish the question yeah Who they're like pick? oh my god he's tall of course we'd go for the tall one duh <laughs> and amanda's like yeah like west but you know what though like west fucks but like jesse like humps like a labrador retriever or like wes like knows where your clit is but jesse is like on your left lip and is like what is this what is this and then he brings like a banana into the bed <laughs> and next thing you know jesse's on the ferris wheel without you and then like going on four or five day work trips like um amanda i think you've segued into the kyle discussion <laughs> and sierra's like he uh jesse like is like, did you come? Or no, Wes is like, did you come? And Paige goes, Wes knows if you came. And Amanda goes, yeah, well, Kyle already came <laughs> on a banana, <laughs> which is really offensive. Yeah. Um, so they're like, oh, poor Amanda, that must be exhausting. And um, Paige is like, he's just scared of, you know, the house and the kids. And Amanda goes, oh, yeah, well, he cheated on me and I took him back. Let's talk about that. Okay. And you don't get to talk about that anymore. That's over now, okay? <laughs> we have, you like, went about. through a whole full-on marriage with this person years after he cheated on you and got away with it. So, no, we're not going to re rewind to that, man. Okay. Yeah, I think at this point, talk about it to the therapist because we've been down this path many, yeah. many, many times. And if you're still holding resentment from it, that may be, you may be entitled to it, but also it's time to move on. Move, why don't you move on to Jesse Solomon? How about that? Because no, that there would be a twist. That would be a twist. Okay. Yeah, that would be a twist. I always saw I always saw chemistry between Amanda and Craig. I was always mm. thinking that Amanda and Craig were gonna probably end up together. But yeah, maybe not necessarily hoping for it. Um, but I just always sense some chemistry there. So we'll see. The next we'll scandal. See. I really enjoyed this premiere. I actually enjoyed all of it, every single aspect of it. I was surprised because I did come in with winter house fatigue. And I was like, oh, God, I don't know if I have the stamina for just like watching them have like trying to convince us they're having the time of their lives in this like house. But actually, I was really into it. And I'm hoping that this is going to translate into like a really good season. All right. Well, you heard it there first, everybody. Certainly we'll did. talk to you next time. Thanks so much for being here. Go check out uh, tickets for our European tour and for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival over at watchwhatcrappens.com. It's also where you can get this video recap ah, and our Southern hospitality uh, season finale bonus episode recap. And we will talk to you next week, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Next week. Have a great weekend, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.